Have you ever wondered how different we might have been if human evolution took a slightly different turn? It's a question that tickles the imagination, isn't it? Let's delve into this intriguing subject, shall we? You see, human evolution is a complex and unpredictable process. It's not as simple as moving in a straight line from point A to point B. Instead, it's more like a winding path with countless forks and branches, shaped by countless variables. One of these variables is the environment. The environment you see has a massive influence on evolution. It can shape and mold a species over time, guiding it down one evolutionary path or another. Sometimes these paths can lead to outcomes that are truly surprising. For instance, let's consider the concept of dwarfism. Now, when we say dwarfism, we're not just talking about individuals who are shorter than the average. No, we're talking about entire populations or species that are significantly smaller than their counterparts elsewhere. This phenomenon, known as insular dwarfism, is often observed in species that live in isolated environments, such as islands. Over time, the limited resources of these environments can favor smaller body sizes, leading to the evolution of dwarf species. Now you might be thinking, that's all well and good but what does this have to do with humans? Well, here's the twist. Dwarfism isn't just something that happens to other species. It can happen to us too. In fact, it already has. So, what if I told you that there once lived a species of dwarf humans, only a meter tall? Yes, you heard that right. A whole population of humans no taller than a meter. Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? But it's true. The proof lies in the ancient bones and artifacts that have been discovered, whispering tales of a time when these small-statured humans walked the earth. But that's a story for another scene. For now, let's ponder this. If environmental factors can lead to the evolution of dwarf humans, what other surprising outcomes might be waiting for us in the hidden corners of our evolutionary past? It's a fascinating question, isn't it? One that keeps us digging deeper into the mysteries of human evolution. In the remote island of Flores, Indonesia, an extraordinary discovery was made. In the year 2003, an international team of researchers, a blend of Australian and Indonesian scientists, embarked on an expedition that would forever alter our perception of human evolution. Their destination was a limestone cave known as Liang Bua, nestled amidst the lush tropical rainforests of Flores, an island that forms part of the Indonesian archipelago. Armed with pickaxes, trowels, and an insatiable curiosity, the team began the meticulous process of archaeological excavation. With each layer of earth that they delicately brushed away, they journeyed further back in time, unearthing fragments of a past that had been hidden for tens of thousands of years. Then, in the depths of the cavern, they stumbled upon something truly remarkable, a skull, diminutive in size yet strikingly similar to our own. As they continued to dig, they found more skeletal remains, each one just as small as the last. These weren't the fossils of children but of fully grown adults standing just one meter tall. They had, quite literally, uncovered a new species of human, one that had been unknown to science. They named this new species Homo floresiensis, a nod to the island on which it was found, but it quickly gained a more endearing moniker, the Hobbit. The discovery of the Hobbit was met with both excitement and skepticism in the scientific community. Was this a new species of human or a population of modern humans with some form of growth disorder? As more fossils were found, including tools and evidence of fire use, the weight of evidence began to tip in favor of the former. This marked a groundbreaking moment in our understanding of human evolution. It challenged our preconceived notions about the diversity of our human family tree, and opened up a whole new realm of questions about our past, our present, and our future. These hobbits were not mythical creatures but a real separate species of humans. Now let's delve into the fascinating details of Homo floresiensis, who they were and how they lived. Homo floresiensis, affectionately known as hobbits, were indeed quite small, standing about three feet tall with a brain roughly a third of the size of our own. Yet despite their small stature, these beings were far from primitive. Archaeological findings suggest they were tool makers, hunters, and even capable of using fire. The population of these hobbits is estimated to have been quite substantial, given the number of skeletal remains discovered. The Flores Island where they resided provided a unique habitat, a world full of gigantic rats, miniature elephants, and Komodo dragons. Despite these unusual neighbors, the hobbits thrived, demonstrating resilience and adaptability. So, why were the hobbits so small? Scientists proposed the island effect as a plausible explanation. 
This biological phenomenon occurs when the size of species shrinks or expands over generations due to limited resources or lack of predators. In the case of the hobbits their size likely reduced to adapt to the island's restricted resources. Their diet primarily consisted of meat, as evidenced by animal remains found at excavation sites. But they weren't just carnivores. Plant remains suggest they supplemented their diet with local vegetation, reflecting a well-rounded approach to survival. The hobbit's small brain size also presents an interesting conundrum. Despite their small brains they exhibited behaviors associated with larger-brained hominins such as tool-making. This suggests that brain size isn't the sole determinant of cognitive abilities, adding another layer of complexity to our understanding of human evolution. The hobbit's existence, in its uniqueness, challenges our preconceived notions of human evolution. They remind us that human history is not linear or uniform, but a rich tapestry of diverse species and survival strategies. Their existence challenges our perception of what it means to be human. The discovery of Homo floresiensis sent shockwaves through the scientific community. This unveiling of a new branch on our evolutionary tree stirred up a whirlwind of debate and excitement. It was a game changer, a paradigm shift, that forced us to rethink our understanding of human evolution. For centuries we had believed that Homo sapiens, us, were the only species of human to walk the earth in the last 40,000 years. Yet, here we had evidence of a different human species that coexisted with us, not in some distant past, but a mere 12,000 years ago. It was as if we'd stumbled upon a hidden chapter in our family's history, one that was both fascinating and baffling. The debates sparked by this discovery were fiery and passionate. Some scientists argued that Homo floresiensis was a separate species, while others contended they were simply a population of Homo sapiens affected by a condition causing dwarfism. The arguments were intense, a testament to the significance of this discovery. But beyond the debates, the discovery of Homo floresiensis had a profound impact on our understanding of human evolution. It suggested that the path to Homo sapiens was not a straight line, but a richly branching tree with diverse and unexpected offshoots. It also raised tantalizing questions about the capabilities of these hobbits. Were they toolmakers? Did they have language? Today the research into Homo floresiensis continues with fervor. Scientists are painstakingly piecing together the puzzle that is Flores man, delving into their genetics, studying their culture, and examining their habitat. Each new piece of information adds another layer to our understanding of these fascinating beings. Yet, there are still many unanswered questions. What caused their small stature? How did they end up on the isolated island of Flores? And perhaps most intriguingly, why did they disappear? This discovery continues to fuel exciting discussions and research in the field of human evolution. As we unravel the mysteries of Homo floresiensis, we are not just learning about them, but also about ourselves. The story of the hobbits of Flores is a story of us, of our evolution, and of the wonderfully complex tapestry that is human history. So, what can we learn from the hobbits of Flores? Let's take a moment to revisit the salient points of our journey together. We began with a puzzling question about human evolution, a question that led us to the discovery of Homo floresiensis, a species of dwarf humans only one meter tall, whose fossils were found in East Nusa Tenggara, Indonesia. We explored the unique characteristics of these hobbits of Flores, their short stature, their small brain size, and their survival until relatively recent times a mere 12,000 years ago. We discovered that these individuals were not just smaller versions of us, but a separate species with their own unique evolutionary history. We delved into the significance of this discovery, how it challenges our previous understanding of human evolution. The existence of Homo floresiensis suggests that the human family tree is far more complex and diverse than we once thought. It reminds us that we are but one branch of a much larger tree, a tree that has many branches yet to be discovered. Beyond the scientific implications, the discovery of the Flores hobbits also offers a broader lesson about the diversity of life on Earth. It serves as a reminder that nature is an artist of infinite creativity, constantly experimenting with different forms and shapes, sizes and abilities. It underscores the fact that diversity is not just a feature of life but a fundamental principle, a driving force behind the evolution of species. In our search for understanding, we should always be ready for surprises. For every answer we find, a new question is likely to emerge. The story of Homo floresiensis is a testament to this truth. It is a reminder that the path of evolution is not a straight line but a meandering river, full of unexpected twists and turns. 
The story of Homo floresiensis reminds us that human evolution is a complex and fascinating journey, full of unexpected twists and turns. Thank you.